This is a chain fountain. As the chain falls from the container, the top of the chain spontaneously rises up above the container. Although it at first seems rather bizarre, the reason the chain rises up can be readily understood. Gravity pulls the chain hanging below the container downwards. This creates a tension in the chain. This tension pulls the chain in the container up and over the edge of the container. For a link sitting in the container, this upward pull does two things. It causes the link to both move upwards and to rotate. The rotation is very important. The effect of the rotation on the link's motion can be easily seen in another experiment, a bullet fired into a block of wood. Here, the block of wood is similar to one link in the chain. We shall apply an upward force to the block by firing a bullet into it from below. By moving the block right or left, we can control where the bullet strikes the block. Notice how the block's motion is different when struck on the end than when struck in the middle. When struck in the middle, the block rises straight into the air, while when struck near the end, the block rotates and moves higher. This difference occurs because when struck on the end, the rotation of the block causes it to push off of the table. This push from the table kicks the block higher into the air. For the chain fountain, this extra kick from the rotation of the links is what pushes the links above the edge of the container. Without the kick, they would not rise above the edge. Here is a repeat of the chain fountain experiment, but with a rope. Notice that the rope does not rise up above the container's edge. This is because the rope does not have links. The individual links in the chain are crucial for the fountain effect to occur. This sketch shows the forces acting on a link. Using Newton's laws, the weight of the chain above the container can be calculated in terms of the weight of the chain below the container and the length and width of the links.